Hey guys and dolls, this is Danny Lee with Animal Sound. Welcome to this Pro Tools 11 session. Uh, I just want to do a quick video on um, the difference between a basic setup with a Superior Drummer or any other multi-output plugin and uh, busting it out to uh, some external uh, aux tracks for greater flexibility and such. Anyway, let's get started. I've got my typical two mix down here. This is just how I operate. Um, not important at the moment. It's it is shaping the sound a bit. However, uh, not what I'm here to talk about at the exact moment in time. I'm just gonna put this on loop for a second. Uh, I've just got some basic drum parts uh, programmed here in my MIDI track. This is on Superior Drummer is instantiated on a uh, instrument track in Pro Tools here. And an instrument track is basically just by Avid, um, the makers of Pro Tools. It's just like a, a hybrid track, if you will. It's a combination of audio and MIDI in one. And I'm a big fan of how they designed these. Anyway, I've got Superior Drummer uh, right on here. Um, just got the basic kit pulled up from the New York Avatar pack. Some pretty cool uh, toms and stuff in there. Anyway. Uh, in their mixer, I have everything set to uh, output 1 and 2. Um, that's all going out. This uh, output right here, which is the main channel out. So I've got bus uh, 125 to 126, which is my 2 mix. Uh, nothing fancy. I've got a LA 2A limiter. And an L1 here just, just for some impact while you listen to this. So if you're a songwriter, this is probably good enough uh, to get you started just to program your parts and whatnot. If you're more of a mixer type like myself and you're putting a song together, generally speaking, we or they would like to uh, have a little more control and detail over our kit, you know, right off the cuff as soon as we uh, start the song. And in that case, what we need to do is we need to bust these internal tracks uh, out to the rest of the Pro Tool session. And uh, to do that, I've got some basic auxes set up here to get the main elements of the kit. I've got my kick, snare, stereo toms, stereo overheads, and a stereo room mic all to come from within uh, Superior Drummer. Uh, and to do that, we need to change our outputs. So for instance, and these are all set to stereo, but I'm taking the mono outs, and I'll show you what that looks like right now. I've got out one and two here for the kicks, and I'm actually going to just combine my three kick uh, elements, the kick in, kick out, and the sub. I'm going to put them all on uh, output three and four. Because to my knowledge, it won't let you do anything else. Okay, and then I've got my... Uh, my snares, I'm just going to take the, the top and the bottom here. I'm going to put those on 5 and 6. I'm going to skip that 1176 doohickey there. Uh, we're going to go right to the uh, hi-hats. Those I'm going to stick with my overheads. So that I'm going to stick on my output 1112. And here's the other overhead track. They put this way over there, out of the way, after the toms. Uh, toms we're not going to use in this session. However, I will show you those. They've got them labeled as RT, uh, one, two, three, four, or whatever, and then floor tom, yada, yada. Um, I'll stick those on 7 and 8 going out. As I said, I won't be utilizing these right now, but just showing you how to do it. Um, not completely important at the moment. And then usually I have the room mic. I do like the way the room sounds, so I just use that anyway. Um, which is the ambience over here. And stick that on 13, 14 coming out of there. I don't typically use the mono stuff, but so I'll just leave that alone. Uh, that being said, that is not being routed to these aux tracks that you see before you. 
kick, snare, toms, overhead, and room. And to do that, I just want to show you the other trick here um, that's important to know. So we've we've got the outputs done in a Superior Drummer. So that's that's all this business in here. So close Superior Drummer, and uh, when you if you know Pro Tools and other programs pretty well, you you have your typical kind of usual suspects for routing. So in this case, we've got the inputs, no input interface and bus. That's the usual uh, that you find when you come into this scenario. However, uh, when you do have a multi-output plugin such as Superior Drummer instantiated anywhere in the session and it's active, uh, you will find this additional tab here for plugin. I've already got these routed, but this is what it would look like if you're doing it the first time. So you just drag your mouse over here, Superior Drummer Multi-Out SD2, insert A, and then you would pick, in this case, I'm not utilizing the kick and the snare as stereo tracks, but mono just to preserve more of a natural sound, in my opinion. So I'm just taking three and four left. And then down here for the snare, I'm taking uh, five and six left. And then when you get down to the toms, uh, stereo becomes the norm. So I've got seven and eight uh, left and right there, both, both highlighted for you. So that being said, I don't need to turn these off the limiters, but I just something I do just to cover my basis. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute these tracks, and now we're going to hear this playing back as separate elements of the kit. I'll just turn this down a little bit, because now I have individual uh, control. Kind of cool. And as you can hear, it's it's definitely got a different sound when you've got it molted out to the, the other tracks. If I turn my um, overhead track up, you'll hear more of that. See, that's what it sounds like by itself for the most part. I'm not usually a fan of having loud overheads. And this is the room track by itself. Well, not by itself, but... Boosted in the mix, if you will. A little more uh, big ambient stereo action going on there. Uh, that's probably typically where I'd have it on a rough basic mix. I like the close mics first. Um, and then you can go ahead and just, you know, start tweaking away. Typically, I take the bottom part of the, the main kick off a little bit just to get rid of the rumble and whatnot. Um, in this case, I've just gone ahead and uh, EQ'd my room mic a bit. Let me solo that for you. It helps if I heed the fact that I have my solo save turned on. So this is what the room mic sounds like. This is what it did sound like. Um, this is just like the natural EQ curve they have on it. And as you can see, I've got, you know, some bass roll off, some treble roll off, because I typically like to have the uh, the overheads do more of the high energy work. And then I've just got some mids here carved out, because uh, they're obnoxious <clears throat> in that 430-ish uh, range. Anyway, I'm going to take this bypass off here. That's my new EQ curve. Gonna reintroduce the rest of the guys from the kit here. And that's typically what it sounds like if you've got a if you've got your kit molted out to the rest of the session. So you definitely have a lot more control. You can take uh, your snare for instance and Get creative, pan stuff around, you know, if you roll that way. So yeah, that's how to molt out your kit from uh, Superior Drummer 2 into uh, aux tracks and buses on uh, in your Pro Tools session. Danny Lee here for Danimal Sound. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.